Many of the governing equations in physics involve multiplying vectors to produce either a scalar or another vector. When you multiply two vectors to produce a scalar, you're taking the dot product between the two vectors. The dot product is required when you convert between two coordinate systems, calculate work, or calculate the surface charge density of a polarized object. Two vectors that are close to being parallel have a large positive dot product, while two vectors that are close to being perpendicular have a very small dot product, and two vectors that are close to being anti-parallel have a very large negative dot product. By the way, anti-parallel is totally a word and you should start using it. You can think of a dot product as showing you the projection of one vector onto another. On the other hand, the cross product multiplies two vectors and produces a third vector that is perpendicular to the first two. There are many, many ways to calculate the cross product, which is a topic that deserves a video all its own, but the most important features to keep in mind are, one, the third vector is always perpendicular to the first two. Two, the cross product gives a larger result if the input vectors are close to perpendicular with each other. And three, if you reverse the order of the vectors in the cross product, the resulting vector flips around. This last part is a weird rule that goes against everything you've learned about multiplication in the third grade, but it highlights the fact that the cross product likes asymmetry. In fact, if you take the cross product of any vector with itself, you will always get zero. That's some serious asymmetry. Before moving on, it's worth noting that you cannot undo vector multiplication. For example, if you know that vector A is 0 to 1 in Cartesian coordinates, and you know that A dot B is equal to 1, you cannot rearrange this equation to solve for B. There are, in fact, an infinite array of vector Bs that will solve this equation, since the dot product only cares about the components that A and B have in common. Vector B can have any X component that we pick and still give the same dot product. The same holds true for the cross product. If you know that vector A crossed with vector B gives you 1, 0, 0 in Cartesian coordinates, there's no way to solve for vector B, since there's an infinite array of Bs that would give you the result that you want. Fortunately, the universe does not give us problems like this, so you only ever have to take vector multiplication one way. But sometimes you have to apply those products multiple times. Take, for example, dotting a vector with a cross product of two other vectors. It turns out you can get the same result by flipping the vectors around as long as they stay in cyclic order. If instead you're taking a cross product of a cross product, you can split up the calculation into two terms with dot products. These two principles have the handy effect that you never actually have to calculate two cross products together. You can always decompose a cross product calculation into terms that each have no more than one cross product. 